Welcome to Words on the Outside with Laura Bynum. This segment features Byron Gillen's Children of the Forest, a novel about a world on the brink of ecological collapse and the young princess making a journey whose outcome could save her people. The genre is science fantasy, and Byron's inspirations include Frank Herbert's Dune and George R. R. Martin's Game of Thrones. Byron will be reading from Chapter 8. Night had nearly fallen when Geralt returned from his hunt. The old man carried the carcass of a dead deer, two arrows sunk deep into its neck. A trail of blood leaped from one of the wounds and down across the front of the dirty robes he wore, over the armor beneath. He dropped the dead meal next to the fire and then turned to collect tools from his pack bag, sitting across from where Fiona was waiting. I got lucky, he began, as he withdrew a skinning knife and a small parcel. I gave myself away right before taking the shot, but our dinner tripped over its own legs when it tried to flee. Fiona didn't say anything. She just eyed the deer, her stomach growling. She hadn't felt so hungry before, not in all of her life. She sat beneath a dead oak tree, wrapped in a fur the traveler had provided her. She still felt woozy and more than a little nauseous, but she at least was alive. She ran one finger across her stomach for the hundredth time, still expecting to find a trace of the grisly wound she'd suffered. There was nothing, save only for a thin scar, barely visible in the light. Geralt had explained the process by which Rue, the wolf she'd nearly died trying to help, had saved her life. More than once, in fact, but still the process of it eluded her. She couldn't comprehend it. He'd made her a wolf rider, a hero of legend and song. And through the connection they now shared, he was as part of her soul and she was a part of his, just like the tales of old. Her mother had often told her and her brother stories of the infamous order, back when they'd both been younger. Ewan and she had played often, pretending and taking turns and portraying various heroes, though those games had quickly ended when her mother revealed there were no women in the Order. She had been inconsolable after that, and Fiona had forever after refused to play with Fiona. She wondered what her parents, what her brother, might think of this now, what they might think of her. She was a woman, and she was a wolf rider. Nearby, Brecca Winnie, tied to a stump along with Geralt's own horse, a thin and dark palfrey named Adern. Gerald set up feed bags filled with grain for both of the horses, and they were happily feasting on the meal. Brecca still appeared to be somewhat nervous, however, and all too often she would raise her head and scan the distant woods, searching for Rue. She was terrified of the large wolf, and had panicked as soon as she'd made eye contact with it when Gerald had brought her back to the camp. What exactly is this connection? The, the wolf, she stopped, Rue, created. Fiona asked Gerald as he knelt by the fire and began to clean the meat he'd brought back with him. It's quite a mystery to me as well, he told her. He began to skin the flesh from the, from the deer's corpse. From what remains of this or the written history, the connection between rider and beast was referred to only as the bond. But what is it? She pressed him. Think of it like an invisible tether, connecting you both together. Through it, his emotions, his thoughts, the magic coursing through its veins, all of it pours into you, and everything inside of you into him. The wolf and you are no longer separate individuals. You are a single being now, forever joined. That's how you knew his name on instinct, as if you'd always known it. It's how your wound healed so completely and so quickly. Fiona looked at him. Then she reached out one arm and waved it around her head. She couldn't feel anything. She couldn't see anything. You won't find it like that, my lady, Geralt said as he knelt beside her. 